Hi guys, welcome to Caternix Corner. My name is Terry, and in this video, I want to talk a little bit about uh, poultry feed prices and why they seem to just keep going up. Uh, have you ever wondered why the cost of feeding your quail uh, keeps going up? Um, I've talked with multiple quail breeders who have either quit keeping quail altogether or have cut their flocks back to more manageable numbers, and all of this is due to the cost of, or the rising cost of feed. Um, I too have noticed an uh, increase in my feed bill, so I've decided to do a little bit of research and find out what's going on and how long we can expect retail feed prices uh, to be inflated. There's two main grains that determine the cost of poultry feed. Uh, they are corn and soybean. Uh, you have to go back a couple years and look at the market numbers um, to see what's going on. Um, but Let's look at corn first and see what happened. Last summer, there were storms out in the Midwest, which destroyed a lot of crops. And on top of that, there was a strong uh, export demand from the US. Also, there were lower uh, than normal yields last year, and the strong demand, which resulted in uh, feed grain stocks going from 60.5 million metric tons in 2019 down to 37.3 million metric tons uh, forecast for this year. Corn had also gone from 2.2 billion bushels in 2019 down to 1.35 bushels today, which is almost cut in half. Um, and the farmers, or they assumed that the farmers would be planting more corn because of the increased uh, uh, corn prices, but that didn't happen. What they did do uh, was plant more soybean. Uh, soybeans drive soybean meal prices, and soybean meal prices drive poultry feed cost. Uh, poultry feed cost is projected to climb 11% by the end of this year. Uh, soybean numbers are driven by acreage, and uh, we went from having 89.2 million acres of soybean back in 19, or back in 2019, down to 76. 0.1 million acres today um, and that has taken soybean stocks down from an almost record high of 900 million bushels down to the current forecast of 120 million bushels uh, which is almost a new record low and all this happened within the past two years so another major issue was that China has increased their import of soybean to supplement their growing need for hog feed. Uh, China's hog market was almost completely uh, devastated or decimated by the African swine fever. Um, so now in an effort to rebuild their hog feed, uh, importation of grain is only projected to increase, thus putting further demand on the US and Brazil. I did talk to the manager of a local feed store. Uh, Jordan Moody of Futurals Feeds was very helpful in giving his input on the reasoning behind the rising cost of feed and uh, what market projections can be expected and also what we can do to alleviate some of those higher feed costs. So those are mostly commodity increases that we've seen. So your, your corn, your wheat, your milo, safflower, sunflower, all of those have gone significantly up. Um, we're, being, we're seeing freight increases across the board, whether that's in the state of Florida, just from Tampa to here, Plant City to here, that kind of thing. Um, but a lot of your grains are brought in from the Midwest, um, that area. So we're seeing the increases coming to Florida and then from Florida, North Florida down in here. Um, but it's primarily just commodity increases. It's been bad crop years. We haven't been able to get peanut hay the last two months or so because of all the rain up in the North Florida, South Georgia area. Um, we're seeing a lot of, uh, I've seen straw increases this year, which we haven't seen in a long time. Um, so just, I think the, the weather, the bad crop year, um, fuel, all of that is kind of coming to, a, to a, a head and really creating these pretty large increases. I mean, we've seen, I've seen corn go up it was going up 50 cents to 75 cents a bag every month for about a three month period of time. So you're talking 15 to 20 percent increases from the beginning of the year till now. Um, same thing with sunflower seeds, safflower, safflower took a huge increase. 
percent in return resulted in a lot of pigeon feed increases. Those are all very grain oriented. They're mostly fat flour, uh, wheat, barley, oats, things like that. All of those have just steadily risen over the past few months. Um, but mostly crop related is, is the main thing. Beyond that, it's a little bit of fuel, but it's mostly the commodities increases. I heard that China's got a lot to do with the cost of feed. We're exporting a lot of feed to China. Yes. Or corn and soy. Sure. The very original increases that came down were uh, China bought up a lot of futures of stocks, so corn stocks, uh, soybeans. Uh, I think those are the main two. So your bushel prices rose immediately from that alone. Those have trickled down a little bit, but they're maintaining steady at a higher rate. That was the initial boom, was that China bought a lot of futures up. When the crop came through, the crop was bad. So when you combine those two, it was a huge jump, that initial wave. And we've just maintained a steady increase over the last few months after that. Is there anything you can recommend that people do to supplement their feed to save a little bit of money? Sure. Um, a lot of people have started making their own scratch in a way. So taking a wheat, a milo, and a corn, combining their own scratch versus buying a free bag, bag of scratch. That's helped. Um, our layer feed, so for, for the chicken people, the layer feed has maintained a very relatively low price. It's been much higher in the past. It's been up to $17 in the past. It's down to 15 and a quarter. Um, but that's maintained relatively low. Um, but like from a small business standpoint, we're doing our absolute best to maintain a low price, um, turn out a lot of good products, make sure the product is clean, so your corn is clean. So in a, in a 50 pound bag of corn, you're getting 50 pounds of corn, you're not getting dust, you're not getting any sort of fillers that aren't really edible. Right. Um, beyond that, just you know, pay attention to prices, buy when you can, and uh, maybe buy separate grains to create your own mixes in a way that usually saves you money. Um, beyond that, that's, that's about all I can think of. Okay. Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of why feed costs are going up, I want to look at some of the things that you can do to alleviate some of these costs uh, in purchasing feed. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a mill uh, near, nearby, uh, you can go directly to the mill and usually get a pretty decent price. Um, I've noticed here locally that um, for a 50 pound bag that I could purchase here in town for around $20, I could actually drive out to the mill and get that same bag for around $13. Uh, the problem that I'm having is one, the mill is so far away, it's halfway across the state, and two, they want you to order, you know, a thousand pounds of feed um, in order for them to sell it to you basically at a wholesale cost. So, <clears throat> There are some other ways that you could supplement your, your quail's diet uh, to kind of uh, offset the cost of feed. Um, although I've never done this, um, a little browsing around turned up a few ideas um, that you could uh, use to supplement your quail's feed and hopefully lower out of uh, pocket expenses. Uh, first thing is you can grow fodder and feed that to your quail. Uh, next was uh, healthy greens and vegetables. Uh, kitchen scraps and garden leftovers, uh, fermented grains, which I, I do ferment feed, but I don't ferment grade, grain, sorry. Uh, mealworms, black soldier fly larva, safflower meal, uh, corn meal, soybean meal, and fish meal are all supplements that can be made. Although fish meal, it's high in protein, but it may make your eggs have a little bit of a fishy taste to them, so kind of watch that one. Um, <clears throat> if you guys have any other ideas on supplements, uh, that we can use uh, to supplement our feed. Um, post them in the comments down below. I'm always interested in, in new ideas. Okay, so I hope this gave you a little better understanding of why the feed costs um, have increased over the past couple years um, and what you can do to alleviate some of those costs. Um, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, guys, please do so. Uh, it helps me out and you can get notified of any new and upcoming content if you hit that notification bell. Um, I want to thank you for joining me today, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.